folks, I'm excited about today's Word on the Street right here in the GLC studios. You know what? This is a very, very serious subject today. And I'm going to title this show today, Deliver Us From Evil. Deliver Us From Evil. You know, there's a, such a thing as a deliverance ministry. A lot of people uh, have misconceptions about it. Some, some are right on. But you know what? Our enemy, our adversary roams around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. And if you really look into that scripture, seeking who will let him devour them. Well, you know what? We are delivered from evil by the blood of Jesus Christ. And my dear friend, Todd Pitts, has an incredible story to tell you about it. How you doing, Todd? Good, brother. Man, thanks for having me on. This All is right. awesome. Yes, absolutely. It's good to have you, man. So, yeah. Um, we, we have your son, Taryn. Absolutely. A media operative Doing there behind the, the camera cameras work. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, young, sharp man. And <laughs> and folks, we, we need all, all the young media operatives we can get. But Todd, yes. you have been involved in the deliverance ministry and you didn't believe it at first oh, yourself. No, absolutely not. Yeah. So uh, you and I talked about three months ago and I think you had asked me, man, you need to go tell your story. And I'm thinking, man, nobody really wants to hear this, you know, but uh as you go around to churches and stuff and you see that very few i mean they don't want to talk about demons they don't want to talk and they just tell you about you know stay away from the devil and right. all this sort of stuff uh but they don't teach anybody how to get free and uh and i personally didn't think uh, i certainly didn't think i had one but i had a friend and he he was telling me about getting delivered got set free through this ministry and uh, I was like, oh, are you kidding me? You had a, a and it cast, uh, uh. And I thought, dude, don't tell anybody in the church, man. They'll kick you plumb They'll out. They'll kick you out. They'll think you're crazy. <laughs> well, anyway, I was so intrigued that I, uh, and, and I will just tell you, uh, I mean, I didn't think I had one, but I was uh, <laughs> coming out of this promiscuous lifestyle, to say the least. And what was going on uh, in my mind uh, so I'm constantly in church every Sunday, and I'm, I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I, I keep lusting, and but this is gonna, this is gonna stop. It's not, I, I've repented, Lord, I'm not gonna do this again. I'm so sorry. And every Sunday, I'm in there telling the same story, and uh, I never will forget. I'm sitting there with my head bowed. I'm by myself. Uh, I'm not dating anybody. I'm by, I'm by myself. Lord said, Don't just shut off all dating. <laughs> this is one way to not do. It. Just shut off all dating. So I'm by myself, but I still got thoughts. I'm not doing it, but I got thoughts, and it was a house of bondage. It was, and uh, Come on. so I'm in there repenting again for you know, the thirtieth time, and I said, "Lord," I had my head bowed, and I said, "Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I won't do this again." And all I saw was ten legs walk by, and I'm like, "Boy, I would like to do that." And I just thought, and of course, the enemy began to speak and said. Dude, he's so disappointed. I mean, this is, how many times have you repented? Shame, guilt. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, man. Well, so my buddy tells me about this deliverance deal. And, uh, of course, I don't need it. I'm good, so there's nothing wrong with me. And <laughs> I, I went and I set up this appointment with this guy. And uh, I go in there, and I'm pretty defensive because I said, look, I'm a Christian. <laughs> I am not demon-possessed. And when I die, I'm going to heaven, and that's that. And of course he said, well, it's nice to meet you. Uh, actually, I don't do anybody that's possessed, any Christians that's possessed, but we do a lot of Christians that are oppressed. Wow. Is it okay if we pray for you, Todd? And I said, uh, I mean, completely disarm me. Wow. And I said, uh, yeah, absolutely, go ahead. And so he goes through this, it was like he read my diary. I didn't have a diary, but if I had one, he, he read it. And of course I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe. And I, I mean, he was reading and I was like, I can't believe anybody I thought this was a deep dark secret you know nobody knows about this well he read it and then he began to cast this spirit of lust out and uh, I, I didn't have any manifestations or anything but uh, I I later I went back to work and us and, and people that were close to me my, my dad and uh, when <laughs> they're looking at me and they're like Man, something's different about you. I, what 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 did you do? And did you get a haircut or something? Yeah, and I but <laughs> I was so embarrassed, I was so humiliated. I didn't. I was like, I, I don't know, you know. Whereas I didn't want to go tell them. Oh, I just had all these demons cast out of me, right? So I kept that a secret because I didn't want to tell anybody. And I thought, man, dear God, if the church finds out, they'll kick me out from, you know, I won't ever be That's asked right. back in. That's what I thought. You're one of those crazies, man. Now. So one of the guy. So the guy told me. He <laughs> said, look, you need. Uh, 
that this thing is out, but I'm telling you, you need to be filled with this word. And he gave me the Bible and he said, in two weeks, they're going to come back and they're going to taunt you. And they're either going to gain victory and because and, they're going to bring seven more just like themselves, uh, or you're going to win by being filled with this. You decide. And I was like, okay, well, this is back before cell phones and, you know, I mean, the phone with those, you know, cord on the wall wow. and all this. So, uh, I marked on my calendar two weeks is on a Friday, uh, and I just wrote "Fight the Devil." Well, I had no idea about spiritual warfare. I mean, <laughs> you know, nobody really taught me this, and of course, we didn't talk about deliverance or anything else. So this was all new to me, and and I I knew. I mean, people were telling me you look different, and it really hadn't dawned on me yet. But I mean, I haven't had lustful thoughts, and you know, they're so so you went through this deliverance experience. Yes, and you you had peace. From, from the, the war in your mind, you had, there was a, de there was a, a yeah. physical difference. Absolutely, and, and what dawned on me was, <laughs> I thought, man, <laughs> I can't believe I haven't lusted. I, I usually lust like 20 or 30 times a day. I mean, I would just see, uh, yeah, I'd like to do her, and all these thoughts, you know, and then of course, guilt, you know, condemnation. And shame. Shame, and uh, so, <laughs> anyway, uh, this, uh, and then I wrote on my calendar, fight the devil. And, you know, I'm just being honest. I was so naive. I had no earthly idea. Wow. So uh, I'm thinking, uh, so I'm in, I live by myself. I, I live in an apartment. And I said, Lord, is he going to show up? Is he going to knock? Uh, and I thought it was the guy with the pitchfork and flames yeah. coming out. Or is he going to, like, walk through the door? Uh, either way, I think I can take him. I, I, and I'm prepared for battle. And uh, so I was, and I, I don't, I'd never done this before, don't recall doing it since, but I said, Lord, I'm going to open up your word and whatever it is, this is, you're teaching me how to fight, to fight the devil. Well, I read where Jesus was, I opened the Bible up I, and it was where Jesus was tested for 40 days wow. and 40 nights. So that's, read, that's not an accident. Tony. Oh, well, absolutely. Most not. people open it up, they'll open it up to Isaiah or, or Psalms oh, yeah. more towards the middle, but you not only opened it up to the New Testament, it's where Jesus was being tempted and, and having his trial in the desert. With the devil, yeah. So I read it and I thought, okay, you know, of course, again, I wasn't super familiar with the word. <laughs> so I'd read the story before, but I was like, okay, well, he defeated him with the word. No, it's written, no, it's written, no, it's written. And I thought, okay, well, <laughs> so I still anticipated him walking through this door. And uh, well, the phone rang. Uh, we don't have caller ID, none of, this, none of this stuff back in this time. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, I answered the phone. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing for the battle. And uh, it was this girl, a really good looking girl. And uh, I'm ashamed, but I, I mean, I, I did have a pass with her. And, uh, like, and this is the night you're supposed to fight the devil. Oh yeah, I'm fighting the devil. Okay. Well, I, I don't have time to <laughs> go see her. Okay, I, call number one, okay. Yeah, I don't have time because I'm fixing to fight the devil. So I didn't want to tell her. Uh, wow. I just said, look, I got plans. I can't, uh, thanks for calling. Have a blessed day. Bye, you know, and hang up the phone. Well, uh, I mean, a few minutes later, somebody's knocking at my door. And I thought, my goodness. <laughs> and I peek out the window and it's another girl. And I thought, what in the world is she doing here? Two. Two. And Two I, assignments. So, uh, and I, it still went right over my head. I, you know, and I'm like, oh, dear Lord, don't answer that door. And uh, the phone rang again, all within a 30 minute time frame. Uh -huh. And it was a, so he saved the best for last. This girl was really pretty. <laughs> I had never talked to her, uh, but she goes to the gym. And I, I remember making several really bad comments. <laughs> and I said, if I could get her, you know, I would do certain things. Well, she's calling, she's never called. And she said, look, I'm babysitting. These people live in a mansion. Why don't you come spend the weekend with me? Oh, wow. Thought, what? And then all of a sudden, the light switch comes Ding. on. This is the devil. <laughs> oh, and yeah. And I, high heels. <laughs> and high heels. And I resisted it. Uh, <laughs> and then it dawned on me that I, I'm not struggling with these lustful thoughts. You had some freedom. And so the Lord, and then he led me to that scripture and says, you know, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And That's I was right. like, oh my God. Well, I, I, I'm ashamed, but I, I, I buried this for years. I didn't tell anybody. Well, shortly after that, that's when I met my wife of today. Right. You know, the Lord had to get me Tracy, clean. Tracy, incredible woman, beautiful you know, woman, off the chart, godly God woman. God set it up, but he wouldn't let me get a date with her until I got cleaned up. And uh -huh. I, I didn't realize this till later. So uh, anyway, um, well, I, I started doing uh, prison ministry 
Uh, and then I started speaking at a, real, a pretty small church in a small town in Oklahoma. And uh, it, <laughs> there were a lot of customers together. Well, I had learned through prison ministry, you know, these are his people. So God, just give me a message and I'll speak it to them. And uh, so the Lord would just start downloading stuff to me. So I'm going to preach, and I've done this several times in this small town. And all, and, and the Lord says, uh, this time I want you to go set my people free. And so I was like, uh, Lord, let me explain something to you. I got, I got customers go there, and, and I am not going to go cast out demons of these people. So that, I, that's a good thought, but give me another message. Now, that's significant because you're very successful at what you do. And, and, I, I and disobeyed, yeah. most people, when it comes to money, they choose the money. They don't choose to obey God. You I chose to obey God. Well, I resisted. And what beginning. you thought was the risk of <laughs> some business there. Well, it was, but and I'd never taught on that before, and I thought, man, I don't, I don't want to go cast these demons out. I mean, this is wow. Why I do that? Uh, and anyway, so I said, hey, that was a good thought, Lord. Give me another message. <laughs> so I asked again, and he said, I've already given you one. Now go do it. And I thought, oh, oh boy. And I thought, well, okay, I probably won't be asked to preach back there again. But anyway, so so be it. And. Um, so the morning of, this is Sunday morning. Now this is a pretty good drive, so I had to drive, I had to get up pretty early. I woke up at four o'clock and I was dealing with some back pain. And I've been to the emergency room several times, right. which is another story for another show. But, uh, I woke up and it's excruciating. I mean, <laughs> torment, my back's tortured. Right. And I was like, oh Lord, this is hurting so bad. I said, God, I know you told me to go preach today. But God, I need to go to the emergency room because I'm hurting that bad. Wow. And I said, Lord, uh, if you really want me to go, call my cell phone. <laughs> I mean, he ain't, he ain't gonna call my cell call phone. Call my cell phone, God. Yeah, call my cell phone. <laughs> and this is early in the morning, five o'clock. My phone rang on a Sunday morning. <laughs> this doesn't happen. I picked it up and it was a pastor friend of mine. And he said, hey, did the Lord tell you to go do something today? I said, yes, sir, he did. He said, he told me to tell you to go do it. And I was like, oh, okay, gotcha, loud, clear. And I thought, man, I'm supposed to go do this. So, so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, look, Lord, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm obedient. I'll go up there. And again, I didn't have any experience in actually doing deliverance. Right. But, I, I mean, I had it done, and I know it works. You've been delivered. Been delivered, been worked. set free. And he told me to go do it. And uh, I said, look, Lord, if I'm going up there, I'm, all I'm asking is that you just give me one, one good one. <laughs> and, and I'm ashamed to say, but the only real show I'd ever watched that was demonic was like The Exorcist. So, oh, wow. Uh, so that's kind of what I was expecting. And, uh, I, I, and I preached the word. And uh, I said, look, if anybody, if, if this relates to anybody here and you've got something you're dealing with and you feel like you need deliverance, just come forward. Well, I wasn't prepared, but the whole crowd came forward. The whole crowd, wow. Everybody. And wow. so. Well, and, and you know, I, and keep in mind, I'd never done deliverance. So I just, <laughs> I'm praying for this one, praying for this one, praying for this one. And the Lord uh, just threw you in the swim. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> some people, you know, got moved or I gave them a word or whatever. And I'm walking out of the church. I never will forget. And I said, Lord, I mean, I, did, I, did, I thought I did everybody there. And I said, Lord, you give me, uh, I mean, I guess we did everybody. But I said, you didn't give me my one good one. But that's okay. I came and did what I did. And I get all the way to my car. And this lady comes up and said, you didn't pray for me. And I said, well, <laughs> you, did you not come forward? I thought you did. And she said, no. And uh, she said, I got a strong man. And I was like, oh, dear Lord, I think I re remember reading that. But again, yeah, I didn't know the word is good. So I was like, well, tell me about the strong man. What is the strong man doing? She said, well, ever since I've been uh, five years of age, uh, no one paid attention to me. So I began to lie. I began to tell stories to, to get people's attention. Wow. And uh, I said, I said, well, you know the drill. <laughs> Draw near to God, resist the devil, and he must flee. flee. And I said, uh, I said, so flee in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden she looks up in these beady eyes and said, I'm not coming out. And I just thought, oh, dear Lord. And, you know, and I'm trying not to. Uh, Does she, you know, she have speaking a different voice or what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I'll be honest with you, it scared the living daylights out of me. But the only thing I needed to do was use Jesus. And I said, bye. I said, in the name of Jesus, you come out. And, man, she started vomiting. 
and it was, you know, I've got kids and so I knew that vomit looks, this was never, I mean, this, this was like green slime that you buy in the tube. And really? I was like, oh my goodness. And uh, the only thing I knew to do was keep saying, in Jesus' name, I command you to come out. And it kept coming out. And uh, of course, now keep in mind, everyone has come out of the church and there's an audience. Wow. They're all watching. Wow. And, and I didn't want to tell them how scared I was, but uh, I, I did it. And all of a sudden she looked up at me, countenance completely changed. And she said, look, Todd, I've been asking God and I asked him eight months ago to set me free from this. And he told me to circle this date on my calendar. Wow. I'm sending someone to wow. set you free. Wow. Well, I began to go back and say, oh, yeah, he told me to preach this, and I told him no. And, and I told him to give me another word, and he said, I've already given it to you, so go do it. And then I woke up, and I was in torment, and, uh, and I said, Lord, if you want me to go, call my cell phone, and all that happened. And wow. I, I was like, oh, my goodness. And before I got home, uh, I'd received two phone calls from that church, people saying, would you go help, would you go help this person? Would you go help this one? Wow. And I'm, oh yeah, absolutely. And so it just began. And then you would get this one free and they would go tell three more of their buddies. And it was just, and it was just lining up at the door because no one was doing it. And, and, and I knew and, of. And you were still seeing these same kind of manifestations when you would do that? Yeah. So they're all, now I'm going again, I didn't have a lot of training and so I've learned through the years. Ironically, you know, people that well, Christians can't have demons. I'm like, oh yes, they can. They can be oppressed. This is the, this is the children's bread, you know, that Jesus talks about. So, uh, so it's first for the Jew and now to the Christian. And so, this is who deliverance is for. Jesus wow. says, uh, "Hey, look, I come to set all the people free who are oppressed by the devil." And so, uh, I started going around just doing these everywhere. I mean, wow, everything from sickness to cancer to I mean, lust, I mean, that was easy for me to identify. <laughs> I had a lot of experience with that one. Uh, and uh, I mean, everything from seizures to whatnot. So we, so when a person is saved, you know, their spirit man is, is saved. Right. So the two areas that we deal with is the soul, which is tormented, and that's your mind, your will, your emotions, mm -hmm. and the other part is your body. Right. And so, you know, like Paul, he's wrestling with the flesh, which is soulish things. So um, this is where the enemy attacks. And so what he does is he goes and he gets legal permission. Now this, I didn't have this when I was doing the deliverances, but the Lord you know, started giving me uh, downloads on it. Wow. So I think it talks about, I think it's Revelations 12, 10, where the enemy goes and it says he's going before the Lord day and night and he's accusing the brother. Well, yeah, and the Lord said, Todd, he's going up there and he's getting court papers and says, now I got legal, you know, Todd or Brett didn't forgive this person. And you said in your word, you know, Matthew 18, 32. The accuser, it's a court term. Accuser, he is, he's accusing you because as an example, you didn't forgive. Right. So he said, okay, because he didn't, I now have legal permission. So he goes before the courts he gets the papers and he comes to torment you. And he's wow. tormenting you. You know, I've never heard it explained quite so clear. You know, we, we use these terms justified by faith, you know, in Romans. I'm, justified means declared not guilty. Yeah. Right? Or you hear people say, I plead the blood of Jesus. What does that mean? I plead the blood. If you're in a court case <laughs> and if you're in court before the judge, you can plead guilty, or you can plead not guilty, or, man, you can plead the blood of Jesus. Be justified, declared not guilty. And man, I tell you what, so the enemy has legal right if you open that window. Yeah, so there's several uh, avenues, you know, obviously through, <laughs> like my case, it didn't take a rocket scientist long to figure out how sexual morality got involved there. Right was I, I opened that door. And so I gave him permission to be there. And then of course, uh, and I, I mean, literally the Lord's like, dude, just son, just quit going out. I mean, so this is one way you can stop it. So I'm not dating anybody, but what happened was is my mind, it was like a lock. 
And uh, I was, and, and again, I was repenting. I was remorseful. You know, Jesus says, if you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed it. Right. And uh, so I've broken that so many times. And of course, every Sunday I'm in there asking for forget, Lord, please forgive me. And uh, and I, honestly, I just got ashamed and got tired. Well, then when I went through that deliverance, I I realized. You know, the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free, indeed. You were free. I was free. Indeed. I didn't struggle any longer with these wick, nasty thoughts. Now you're on, you're able to oh, see yeah. what he has before you because you, you have that that obstacle removed. Yeah. So I had to go through all that to meet him. <laughs> I get set up with my wife. And I, I, I and we just celebrated 30 years. And wow. Uh, I was telling the Lord, man, thank you so much. And uh, I was in the secret place, and the Lord said, you, you, do you remember what uh, your prayer request was? And I said, no. <laughs> what was it, Lord? And he said, you asked me to help you keep pure for a year. That's how warped your mind was. And I'm wow. Like, and I've been pure for 30 years. I mean, I haven't cheated. Not one single time. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I cannot believe. But that's just, I was bent towards that, and that was where my lifestyle was. So, uh, and well, again. He gave you a gift. Yes. And Tracy. And not only did he open that door for you to, to, to date her, she literally was standing by your car, not knowing it was your car. Oh, yeah. When you first... We first met, yeah, absolutely. Met. And I've been asking, you know, ask, seek, knock. <laughs> so I've been asking. I said, Lord, I've been asking. And I, I've, I've yet to say hello to her. I've seen her at church a dozen times, but I can't quite connect. And I said, Lord, I've asked you. Of course, I had to go through deliverance. And, right. I mean, he showed me this later. And uh, and I said, Lord, I've been asking. I said, Lord, I, I don't even know. I, I, maybe we get married. I, I, I don't quite understand. But I, I feel that strong torture, her, and I, I just don't get it. And uh, I said, but I've asked you so many times. <laughs> would you help me? And I, I said that prayer. I go inside a convenience store. I come back out, and she was standing by my car. And I didn't, I didn't blow it. I didn't walk up and say, hey, by the way, I just prayed we got married and I'm caught. <laughs> I reserved I've that. I've had that happen. <laughs> I reserved that for a couple of weeks later. The Lord I, told me you're my husband. <laughs> no, he didn't tell me. I didn't do that. Uh, but uh, long story sh uh, short was uh, we went out the very first night. Uh, six weeks later, we were engaged. Wow. Tracy was sick. She had never been with anybody. <laughs> never drank any alcohol. Wow. I mean, nothing. And, uh, you know, well, how about you? Well, let's see. I was sober this night and this night. And, uh, oh, yeah, we used to have contests, you know, to see how many girls we could be with. I mean, wow. that's how sexually immoral I was. Uh, so and you I were delivered. Oh, absolutely. So first you were delivered. Yes. Then you were obedient. Yes. You were hurting. Former bodybuilder, then you were hurting. Yeah. And you even laid out a fleece. Lord, call my cell phone. <laughs> you didn't think it happened. You really it. want me you to do it. Yeah. So you were delivered. Then you obeyed. Yes. And then you were rewarded. Yes. And it started with being willing to be delivered. You know, Todd, my dear friend, we need to do a whole series on deliverance from evil. But with the few minutes we have remaining and that camera right there, there are people who are watching yeah. that you're tormented. And oh, yeah. you don't know what the, hey, I said the prayer, you know, what's wrong? Folks, the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who will let him devour them. Folks, sometimes we just need help. And, and even in the Lord's prayer, deliver us from evil. What would you say to people watching right now that they're struggling, they know that there's something dark, there's something wrong. Maybe, maybe there's a pharmacia, drug abuse in their past. Maybe there's witchcraft associations. Maybe there's just simple immorality, whatever the, the, the case is. What would you tell them right now? I, I would tell them, you know, first of all, and this is just my opinion, but I think there's probably 98, 99% of the church is afflicted in some way. Again, doesn't mean demon possessed, but oppressed, got issues, struggle with. Uh, and literally when you, uh, and I don't want to get into all the stories, but I can just tell you stories and stories. But if you come one time and you see this, you see these things manifest, you would never doubt it again. You would know because these things are real. I see them manifest all the time. And uh,
but people are people are struggling, and there's very few people, in my opinion, uh, that 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 does doesn't preach on it. I mean, they talk about the devil a little bit, just stay out of his corner and all this stuff, but they don't teach it. So Jesus taught, I think it was 39 times in the New Testament. I think the word, the the the, he, the Greek word is ekbalo. It means to cast out. It means to hit with the opposite force. Wow. This is what he tells you to do. And, and you simply do that. He didn't ask, I mean, there is a case where you can pray them out, but uh, and most people just, you know, ask him to get it out and they, they, you know, and it doesn't happen, then they're shocked, you know. And uh, so I, I would encourage them to get with any, you know, deliverance ministry that can help set them free so they'll be free indeed. And, and I, I'm telling you, I lived it, I know it. Uh, you don't think it's, it's, it's going on with you, but it is. So, uh, man, I would just encourage people to get, um, to get with a deliverance ministry and literally get set free because you, want, you don't want to be locked up and they just don't realize that it's, they are in prison. So there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh yes. There's freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Yes. And when the sun sets you free, you are truly free indeed. Lord bless those yes. people watching right now in Jesus name. Lord, uh, yes, Lord. You are not born to live in darkness. You were born to be free and to be his child and to live out the beautiful destiny that he has for you. May you do that. May you be delivered from evil. Pray the prayers. Spend your time with the Lord in the morning. Get in that secret place. This is the first, I think, of dozens of shows we need with Todd Pitts. And I'm so grateful for my friend. Hey, thank thanks, you for brother. coming. Appreciate it, Thank man. you, Taryn. Thank you, Danny. And folks, thank you for watching Word on the Street. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Thank you. This was uh, wow. This was actually a, a really a neat piece that we had shot, uh, and it was during January. Another one of those deals where it's just so so cold. And you think about those guys being out there in the oil rig, yeah. and they're working on it, and they're doing what they're doing. They're making a connection here, and there's actually there's guys on both sides of this. And I ended up shooting this. Um, the sun is setting, and it's just beautiful out there. The uh, water and the mud is separating because of it's so cold uh, and it just got this beautiful colors that were there but <laughs> i ended up with two guys on each side that were the typical guys that were working on the rig and they were trying to stay warm and bundled up and <laughs> they looked pretty rough and i ended up thinking oh, i just it was such a cool piece i couldn't not do something with it right. so i went ahead and i wow. did a thin piece of this and it has done tremendous. We actually have this piece uh, about two stories tall, uh, two places, uh, one wow. in Fort Worth and one in Houston.